Now, when you think about taking a city break in the UK, Coventry probably isn't at the top of your list, but should it be? Well, we've come here today and we've got the whole day to explore this city, visit some of its top visitor attractions and explore the history of the city as well. And what better place to start than in the... And what better place to start than in the cathedral ruins? Well, this is pretty incredible. I can't think of anywhere else in the UK where you can just walk amongst the ruins of a cathedral like this. It's very peaceful. It is, isn't it? It's very popular though. There's a lot of people just wandering yeah. around, taking pictures. It's strangely picturesque it for something very... that's very symbolic of, like this was destroyed yeah. in 1940 during the Blitz and they made a decision to just leave the ruins as they were and then build the new cathedral next to it. Mm -hmm. And I think that adds to it as well, because does. that's possibly the most modern cathedral in the UK. And it's right next to these ruins. Sorry. Are you okay there? There's a fly. <laughs> <laughs> you can see where all the pillar supports would have been as well, but we notice this one here is a little bit different and you can just make out this would have been a staircase. And then what's really cool is you can just walk from the old ruins straight into the new cathedral. Okay, that place is pretty remarkable. That is like no other cathedral we have ever been to in the UK. Very modern, as you would expect. Very light and airy rooms in there as well. And oh my God, the stained glass windows in there are absolutely insane. Also, we saw in there a charred cross and it was two of the original roof beams from the original cathedral. When it was bombed, they fell to the floor and they landed in a cross shape. So they kept them, turned them into a cross, and it's now on display in the new cathedral. Also, we saw people in there wearing hard hats and climbing gear, and we were like, what on earth is going on? And we've come outside, and there's a load of people gathered to the side of the new cathedral, all watching, and when we looked, they're abseiling down the side of it for charity. I think it'd be a cool experience, but I don't think I could do it. It's the leaning back slowly over the edge at the top that does to it for me. You would have to push me, and I would probably cry. I mean, you're in the right place to pray for help. <laughs> anyway, we're going to go to a museum. Yeah, we're going to go, I think it's called the Herbert Museum. It's literally just behind Josh and it's the next place to visit. So. I was sold because Jason said there was dinosaurs in there. There's dinosaurs on there. It says something about Dippy on the outside. I don't know if it's the Dippy, Dippy because he went on tour from no, the Natural History he's Museum. he's back at London. Is he back there he's now? He's back in London. So they must have their own version of Dippy. I think. Let's go check it out. God, they've got a Harrington jacket. Me and my sister have one of these. I would still wear this. I'm sure it's still in the loft. Apparently, Perhaps. they were popular yeah. with fans of Two Tone. And I think they used to record music here in Coventry. So that's why it's here. I've got a picture of me in this somewhere. Also, not only has he got one of those, there's a pram over in the corner that he's got one of as well. <laughs> I'm sure my mum still got that pram in the loft. Well, that wasn't the biggest museum we've ever been in, but there were a few little gems in there. I particularly enjoyed the history of Coventry Gallery, which had artifacts from Coventry's history throughout the decades, right up to 2011. And then there was a few art galleries in there, but I did appreciate the Throne of Innocence because not only was it made out of discarded weapons from the war that, in Mozambique, but it also looked like it had a cheeky little face on it as well. And then we saw a really random angel, a massive angel on the staircase. She was huge. It looked like, the only way I can describe it is a drag queen angel. Yes. <laughs> when you look closely at the face, yes. it was very interesting. But obviously the unexpected highlight of the day for us was... Dippy. Dippy the dinosaur. It is the Dippy the dinosaur. We thought it was back in London. Yes, that's what I thought, that's what I thought I read. The only downside I felt with that museum, there was a lack of dinosaurs. Well, I wonder <laughs> now if the dinosaur I saw online was because Dippy is here. Yeah. And to be fair, you wanted to see Dippy for quite a while. I mean, I've seen him, you but were not you, But you were disappointed when he left London. Yeah. So you've seen him here in Coventry, and to mark the occasion, bought you a gift. What? He snuck off to the loo, I snuck into the gift shop. Got your present, mark it. 
a bag with Dickie on it. It's not just a bag. The bag was an added bonus. That didn't cost me anything. Oh, it's a fridge magnet. Dippy in Coventry. There we go. Fridge magnet. Put on the fridge to say that not only have you seen Dippy, the world, the, the nation's, well, I can't read that through the camera, nation's favourite dinosaur. Yes. But you saw Dippy in Coventry. If you look closely. Oh, it's actually got. It's got the Coventry feature. skyline by Dippy's legs. That's I cool. I thought it was kind of cool. So that's three cool. quid. Set me back three quid, did it? <laughs> I'm only joking. Oh, oh, it's a that counts. Thank you very much. Anyway, on that note, everything we've done so far today has been free. Yep. You wander the well, cathedral ruins. Well, apart from that. Apart from that. But you wander the cathedral ruins for free. You go in the new cathedral for free. You go in the Herbert Museum for free. The next thing we're going to do, though, isn't free. Coffee? No. Oh, car you know, museum? I told you that the old cathedral was completely destroyed in the Blitz and those ruins that we're walking through are the only bits that are left. Oh, I know what you're on about. That spire behind you, that tower, is the only bit that survived in total. Yes. And although it was knocked a little bit wonky, I'm sure it's completely safe because you can go to the top of it. Sorry, Josh, it is open. That means we're doing it. How many steps do you reckon? Well, funny you should say that because there's literally a poster on the wall that says it's 180. But the poster also says it's the best views in Coventry, so how can you not do it? Yeah. Come on. One, two, three, four. I'm not counting. <laughs> I'm not counting. <laughs> You've climbed as high as one of Diplodocus. What that says? Diplodocus. It's oh. Dippy. We've climbed as high as Dippy already. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're nearly there. We've just been told by a couple on the way down, we're almost there. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh. Made it to the top. High five. That was hard work. <laughs> it was fine. You get to the halfway point and then you're not. It's still got a load. Oh. And then people come in the other way and it's very narrow and very awkward. <laughs> so, that was an experience. I'm so unfit. We'll worry about the views in a minute when we've caught our breath back. <laughs> Is now a bad time to tell you though. This was built in the 1300s. Obviously, it's the only part of the cathedral that survived the Blitz, mm -hmm. even though it's a bit wonky afterwards. We're all a bit bent. Apparently, <laughs> apparently, it's the third highest cathedral tower in the country. Great. Good news is we've completed it. Well, we've not backed down yet, but we're at the top. That's hard. We've nailed it. Worst thing is there's two others taller than this, maybe, for us to do one day. Oh, I'll call in sick that day. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we've got our breath back. The views up here are pretty incredible we can see where we've already been down in the cathedral ruins over to the museum we can even see the abseilers on top of the new cathedral and the tiny little hole that they're popping out of the top of apparently you can even all see it all the way over to leicester on the horizon which is 24.8 miles away according to the sign can you see it no <laughs> can you <laughs> no it's a dot on the landscape i think but we can see where we're going next as well we can see a spire of a bar. Yep. Hopefully we might be able to get there for a drink and a nibble to eat in a second. Yeah. We can see the transport museum where we're going to in a little while. The glass bridge. The glass bridge. We're going to go and have a look at that. Yeah, we can see it all up here. Now we've got to go back down. Oh no, I don't mind going down. It was the coming up. <laughs> <laughs> well, we thought we were done, but we forgot halfway up or down the tower, whichever way you're going, is this little step out to view the bells. But we're literally a minute too late. Yeah, we just heard them go off. <laughs> she just gone off, so we would have seen it. But this is a. Uh... It's cool that you can still see the bells. Apparently I was reading downstairs they're computerised now, which probably isn't much of a surprise. Well, that was definitely worth the five pound we paid for it, even if we are a little bit knackered afterwards. <laughs> definitely burnt off lunch that I haven't even ate, eaten yet. But that means lunch will be guilt free. Yes. So that's good. However, top tip, it's only open on a Saturday. Yeah. It opens at 11. Get there at the start if you can. Don't do it on a full belly. There's a maximum capacity of 12 people. Mm -hmm. And if there's 12 people already up there, you're gonna have to wait or leave and come back. We timed it just right. We waited about five minutes before we were let up. We've just left. There's, there's about 30 people there's waiting. That, that is a big queue now. Yeah. It was literally <laughs> just us when we arrived, so. And you can't book online. You can't book a time slot. So get there when it opens at 11. All right, lunch. Please.
Well, it was from one of Coventry's famous spires to another famous spires. We have just been in the Spire Bar, hosted by Dylan's Brewery. Yeah, <laughs> he's, very, was about. he's very happy. We had lunch. We ate food. But it's really cool because it's inside an old church tower, and he was saying it was last to church 800 years ago, mm -hmm. which means we were just sat in a very old church tower mm -hmm. eating Indian street food, which was something a little bit different. Say, we wanted to have something a bit different, so that's what we did. That's what we chose. We had a, a mixed grill, which was chicken tikka, shish kebab, and wings. Yep. Um, and then we had vegetable samosas and vegetable spring rolls with a really bright green mint dip, but it was delicious. Yeah, and we had two fountain cokes. Cause yeah, because we're, <laughs> we're hardcore. Roll, yeah, craft roll. brewery, but we're, we're with the uh, Diet Coke because we're that sort of people. <laughs> but on the way there, we stopped off at Broad, Broadgate Square and um, we found the statue of Lady Godiva. So Lady Godiva, according to legend, rode through the streets of Coventry on a horse, completely naked, to try and stop somebody from taxing the people of Coventry as heavily as they were being taxed back in the day. And we saw possibly the most remarkable clock we've ever seen in our lives. On the hour, Lady Godiva comes out on her horse, completely naked, and this creepy man comes out from above her to have a little peek as she goes past with her bangers out. And apparently, <laughs> that is where the saying, Peeping Tom comes from. His oh. name was Tom, and he was peeping at Lady Godiva. Apparently everyone else stayed indoors, except for Tom. Yeah, well, we've all learned something new today. We have learned something new today. And we're about to learn more about the history of Coventry as well, because there's a very rich car industry history here in Coventry, and we're going to the Transport Museum. I'm looking forward to this. Apparently it's Coventry's number one visitor attraction. What's with the finger? <laughs> I don't know. Josh, the first car is a bright pink Barbie car. I mean, cool. Now there's a lot of bikes in here, but my favorite one has to be that one. Look at that. Five people would have ridden that. I wouldn't have wanted to be the person on the back of that five seat tandem though. There's nothing there. No. You're not hanging off the back I of it. I feel like that'd be very bouncy. So Josh has been looking for the car that we can use to travel the UK in. And I think I've just found it. How about this one? I sit on the back and drive it. And you sit in the front like a lady of leisure. Could you imagine my hair? It would be like. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we do a lot of travelling around the UK and I'm trying to find the right one. We'd, we'd probably need a roof, He wouldn't to be let fair. me have the Barbie girl one. No, you're not having the Barbie one. <laughs> what about a motorbike and sidecar? We could be like Wallace and Gromit in the wrong turn. No. I was also thinking about this one. Yeah, this, but... one's, this one's got a roof, but Josh noticed... Imagine if it's pouring down with rain. You're going to have to cook us manual, so you kind of have to... Wipe it yourself while you're steering. That's... That sounds dangerous. No. This one used to belong to King George V. That was not me. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, this one used to belong to King George V and Queen Mary. That's a royal car. It's a hefty little bugger, isn't it? Uh-oh. We've reached the Blitz experience, and there's warnings that it contains flashing lights and loud noises. I feel like... I feel like I'm walking through a Halloween Horror Nights. Yeah, I don't know I like this very much. Right, waiting for someone to jump out and oh. scare us. <laughs> it's the Harry Potter car. Is it going to fly? <laughs> I hope not, because I'm stood in front of it. <laughs> well, we survived the Blitz experience, but apparently now we've got to survive crossing the official picket line. It says, do not cross. Whoops. Coventry, please. I remember that. Ooh. Jaguar team was a good bunch. Couple of the boys had Transit City. This I is strange. The bill. Never watched it. I think we found the vehicle for us, Josh. This is definitely the one, I think. I haven't looked at the side yet. Yeah, it'll do. Yes, this is the one. Go on the blues. Not a football fan, as you can see. No. <laughs> Right, a calendar right. to a race. You ready? I'm gonna go red. So I'm going white. It, you need to put it there. Three, Three two, two, one. one. Go. Oh no! Yes. I had a car in the way. <laughs> there was a car That's in the way. That's your fault for not checking the hazards before you done it. There was police in the way. So I got, I got <laughs> caught by the police. You got stopped by the police.
Okay, I'm starting to get a little worried. Down to the land speed exhibition. This is what I'm really excited to see. The fastest car in the world ever. You mean our car isn't the fastest in the world? I hate to break it to you, but no. <laughs> so we have just seen the first car to break the sound barrier. The first fastest car in the world ever at 628 miles an hour. And then the fastest car in the world, Thrust 2, which went just over 633 miles an hour. That museum was absolutely huge. We've been in there well over an hour, possibly two. And if any of our regular viewers were starting to get worried that we hadn't had a coffee in this video yet, on the way out of the museum, we found Baxter Baristas. So we popped in for a cheeky latte and a delicious sweet treat. Those cookies were absolutely incredible. They were more than incredible, they were Fantastic. And they were entirely your fault because I didn't even see them until you pointed them out. Needed the energy. Don't know how I feel about the bits you can see through. It wobbles. It does. This is Coventry's famous glass bridge. I can see why it's called that, because it does look like glass, but um, oh, it actually is. <laughs> oh, is that actually? <laughs> it, yeah, it, it actually genuinely is. We seem to keep finding elephant symbols of some sort around the city as we wander around as well. So be sure to comment down below and let us know because we don't really know why. Yeah, what's the connection between what Coventry and elephants? The connection. Is there one or is it just random? I don't know. <laughs> it's probably just random, but, but someone yeah, might know. So. We've seen them everywhere. There's also, one under this gate. Also squirrels. Oh, squirrels, yeah, apparently squirrels, squirrels as well. well. Apparently the squirrels are really friendly here. But I don't find that difficult to believe. That wasn't me. <laughs> I don't find it difficult to believe that the squirrels are friendly here though because I found the people here really friendly today. They are very friendly. Very yeah. chatty, very informative and they seem to be very proud of this city especially when you're going into the attractions and like tower climb and the museums and that they want to give you all the information and make sure that you're actually enjoying yourself. So we've just made the short walk over to Coventry Canal Basin because we love a good canal and we love seeing all the Rosie and Jim boats moored up along the canal. I was just reading, you can walk the five and a half miles from here to a place called Hawkesbury Junction just outside the city or you can run it, you can cycle it, you can boat it. We are not gonna do that today. No. What we are gonna do yes. is go back over possibly the most terrifying footbridge we have ever walked in our lives. The bridge, it wobbles. I thought it was me because I'm scared of heights, but no, this thing wobbles. It wobbles and bounces oh. so much. Over. I felt like my legs weren't working properly. <laughs> over a very busy road. Well, Coventry has been a huge surprise today. This city wasn't even on our travel bucket list until recently, but walking the cute medieval streets and seeing all the medieval architecture, wandering the cathedral ruins, the brand new cathedral, climbing that tower, the transport museum, and so much more has made our day so much fun here. And we can't wait to get back and explore more of it because there's still so much to do. We even just got to see those famous friendly Coventry squirrels as we was walking back to here as well. And Josh is very happy because because as we walk past the new cathedral again, there's an orchestra in there setting up for a concert tonight. And what were they playing, Josh? They was playing Jurassic Park. And you can imagine in there, that sounded absolutely incredible. Which is a nice segue into stuff that we didn't get to see here in Coventry today. It's got a very rich music history. If you want to see more of that side of Coventry, then click this video here from when our friends over at the Magic Geekdom came and visited this city. They went to the Music Museum. They found so much more food as well. They went to Coventry market and done loads more than we've got to see today.